What's up, wrestling fans? Um, obviously, we knew this day would come. Howard Finkel passed away today. Um, uh, he wasn't, obviously, in the best shape last uh, few years. So, you know, this was something that we were sort of expecting, unfortunately. But yet, always hoping that maybe that it, it, for some reason he would get better and, and it would, like... You know what I mean? And it'd be like, wow, he really came out of that, and you, that's what you hope for. But I didn't know the details of all this stuff. But, uh, you know, Howard Finkel is a legend. He's the first voice maybe that I ever heard in WWE. I, mean, I can't quite be sure. But he's the most sustained voice in the WWE. When I was five years old and I started watching wrestling for the first time, or I started being aware of it for the first time, um, you know, there's there's voices that stand out to me. Obviously, the announcers like Gorilla Monsoon, Jesse the Body, uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan, lo those guys. Um, everything about the production of what I saw when I was five years old from WWE is what sucked me in. You know, uh, Vince McMahon's booming voice of Welcome to WrestleMania, the Mega Powers Collide, uh, to the commentary, to Howard Finkel. These are all guys that... You know what I mean? That made me... I didn't know it at the time. I, You know, I always thought I wanted to be a wrestler or whatever. I didn't know it at the time, but these are all guys that inspired me as far as pronunciation, uh, announcing, having a presence. Um, nobody sounded like Howard Finkel, man. Nobody, when he would um, announce people to the ring, he, he is and was the greatest announcer in WWE history, starting in 1977 with the WWE when they were the Worldwide Wrestling Federation. They were the Worldwide Wrestling Federation. Then they were the World Wrestling Federation. Now they're World Wrestling Entertainment. And the guy lived through all the name changes um, of the company. The, the, the iconic voice of Howard Finkel, man. When you first hear him, like you would imitate it when you were a kid. You you would someone was coming down the ring, you'd be like, about to come down the aisle, Intercontinental Champion. Like he had this just the 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 way whatever he did, his voice, nobody has that voice, that announcing style. People have a raspy one a lot of times, but he just had this this unique, perfect uh, voice for for wrestling like if you were to build uh, a wrestling company and you said who is the ring announcer that you can have any ring announcer you want in the entire world what ring announcer are you going to pick I can't believe that anybody would pick anybody <laughs> but Howard Finkel I don't think I, I, I think it may, maybe nobody there's nobody else there's no other guy that you would say we're making an all-star company you can only have one ring announcer. Who's it? Who are we going to go with? 90% say Howard Finkel, if not everybody. The guy, that's the guy you want. Announcing your main event, announcing uh, for your company. Um, and it's, you know, just like Bobby Heenan, you know, these are the guys that, like, I, I, I always I always say that there's these different generations of WWE. I can remember at WrestleMania 9, I thought Jim Ross... I still I still consider Jim Ross new because I don't know what it is about being a kid, but when you're a kid, stuff seems like a lifetime. Like one year feels like five years. Two years feels like 10 years. And I can remember being nine years old or 10 years old around WrestleMania 9. And I remember thinking, who's this new guy, Jim Ross? You know what I mean? And, you know, so still to this day, you know, Jim Ross is really the second version of WWE that I saw you know the first the there, there's 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 two other ones the first one was you know that classic like Wrestlemania 1 2 3 4 um and then there was Wrestlemania 5 to Wrestlemania you know 7 and, and then 8 and 9 were different and just all these original guys Bobby the Brain Heenan Gorilla Monsoon Jesse Ventura even Vince you know Vince McMahon was always there but these these voices that I wanted to be like as somebody when I was doing radio or, or announcing or broadcasting. These are the voices that I would want to be like, that I wanted to, that I, I, I learned from them. That's why by the time I went to school, you know, they would say, well, you already have a good voice or you already sound like you could do this already or you can do the voiceover of this or that. 
And it's because of these guys that I heard, and this is how you pronounce things and how you say things. And even when I had my thickest Boston accent, you know what I mean? I could still put a microphone up and, and without a Boston accent, pronounce things the way that, try to pronounce things the way that they did. And it was because of that, just watching them and listening to them, um, you know, since 1988 or 89. I've been listening to Howard Finkel since 1988 or 89 in every way possible. Um, this is sad. Um, I just, I, you know, I met him once. Unfortunately, we really couldn't get an interview because of some kind of legal thing with his WWE contract. But, um, you know, it, at least I got to tell him, got to talk to him. But uh, I, the guy was such an inspiration to people. I don't even think he know. I don't think he'll ever know. He'll never know. I don't think. You know, maybe he does, but. Maybe he knows that a lot of fans like him, and, and there's a lot of people he's that have you know he's got fans and people love him. But um, you know, to people like me, I don't know if he'll ever understand. Uh, I always dreamed that one day I would be in the WWE. I always dreamed that I would be in the WWE one day, and I would say to guys like Howard Finkel, I would say to guys like Bobby Heenan, and I would say to guys like Jim Ross, I would say, "You don't understand um, the influence and the impact that you had on me." Um, and it means a lot because you, it really, like I watched you and you don't understand, you know, you train me without training me, you know? Um, and, and so you're, you mean a lot to me, like, so thank you. And I said that to Bobby Heenan, you know, luckily he, I got to say that to him. Um, but you know, I always, yeah, you know, I always dreamed that I'd be in the WWE and I would, um, be able to say that to these guys. Unfortunately, that hasn't worked out at all, but you know, um, I did get to say that to them, uh, you know, when I was doing interviews for my show at, um, you know, fan accesses and, you know, WWE events and meet and greets and doing different wrestling shows here or there when I've been doing commentary for indie companies, you know, every once in a while they bring these, you know, legends back and stuff like that. So you get to meet them there and tell them. So that's the good thing that, that you, that we did get to say that, but this guy will go down as the greatest announcer in wrestling history, period. Uh, the greatest ring announcer of all time, Howard Finkel. All the favor, that's right. Is he crying? <laughs> I think he is. I always say, you definitely know you made it when Howard Finkel announces you, man. That, that, that was huge for me. We may never make the announcement. We'll let this go on all night. Oh, <laughs> He's saving the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh, God. stop the pain. Introducing <laughs> the Challenger. Oh, God. From Chicago, Illinois. Oh, God. Weighing 218 pounds. C. I just like when they uh, when they brought back Howard there and he was tearing up and then of course Cole was making fun of him but uh, it was kind of funny man uh, but you could really go back with Howard Finkel go back to the '80s uh, or whatever you know. Opponent Louis Albano. And ladies and gentlemen, in the corner to my left, the Golden Boy. Arnold Scullin. Also, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to introduce, in the corner to my left, the promising young wrestling star who is a protege of 